Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Quapaw Area Council recognition event recognizing volunteers in our council. Volunteers are simply the lifeblood of the Quapaw Area Council, and it's our opportunity to recognize you here tonight. First, let me, uh, I'm Mark Young. I'm the scout executive. It's an honor for me to serve in that role. And uh, I'd like to introduce to you tonight the master of ceremonies. He's uh, someone that really doesn't really require introduction. Anyone that's been around scouting for any time in the Quapaw Area Council would recognize Mr. Dick Browning. Dick has been a volunteer in the Quapaw Area Council for over 40 years. He is an Eagle Scout and a recipient of the Silver Beaver Award. And I know he will do an excellent job tonight leading us through tonight's program. Dick Browning. Thank you, Markle. Uh, I've been told that uh, this year marks the 40th year of Markle's service to scouting. And uh, you can, it's hard to believe he must have started when he was seven or eight. You know, he's had this cushiony job with no pressure and, and everything. So maybe he's doing it like the governor does in retirement for every year. They count two and a half. So I don't know which it is, but Markle, we appreciate all the time you had. I remember working with Markle when he was here before in our council back in the uh, mid 60s or 50s, when it, whatever it was. <laughs> So, thank you, Marco. You can sit down now. It's good to be here, and it's good to be with y'all. And it's good to come together to recognize those people who have given outstanding service to our council in the past year. It's really good to come together anyway, isn't it? Particularly at this time when our country has had to shelter in place, as they call it, stay at home. You know, my wife tells me she brought out a dress. She said, I could wear this 30 years ago and it was real pretty and I want to go someplace. I said, well, we'll go to the council banquet. That didn't, that didn't work out too well. She was going to watch it tonight. I don't know if she got on or not, but if she did, I'm in trouble. But anyway, again, it's, it's good to be here. It's good to be with y'all. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to call on the scouts from Troop 99 to present our colors and to have our invocation. So if you would all rise, Troop 99, the program's yours. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the presentation of the colors and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance and tonight's invocation. Color Guard, advance. Salute by the numbers. One. Color guard, post the colors. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Color guard, return to post. Please prepare yourself for a word of prayer. Our Father, first of all, we thank you for scouting and the difference that it has made in the lives of so many over the years. We also thank you for the opportunity that we have tonight to recognize some individuals who have dedicated themselves in extraordinary ways to serving young people throughout scouting. We ask that you would fill our hearts with thankfulness tonight as we reflect on these individuals and on the program that we love. We ask for your blessing on us and on the scouting program in this coming year. Amen. Let's give the scouts of Troop 99 a big round of applause. Thank you, scouts. Well, scouters, that's the 
why we're here is to help those young men become better citizens, young men and young women, I'm sorry. You know, that's what happens when you get old. You just, you just can't help yourself. Uh, at this time, we're going to uh, do what we normally do at a banquet, and that's eat. Okay? So when you're finished, just let me know, and we'll get started. Okay. Uh, Jim Rhodes was lodge chief many years ago, and he was telling me that he told everybody he was going to a virtual banquet and didn't know how that was going to work. Uh, I'm, I got an email the other day from a, another organization that I'm involved with, and they were having a virtual banquet to raise money for our charity program. And so you were supposed to send in, and they were going to uh, do a Facebook page and show food so you could watch. And at least we're not doing that. Uh, this time we have, uh, instead of eating, we're going to get to listen to Governor Asa Hutchinson, who has a special message for us tonight. Good evening, and welcome to your first ever virtual Quapaw Area Council Volunteer Recognition event. Volunteers are the backbone of a community, and while we can, perhaps, measure your contributions in terms of money and time saved, your biggest contribution is your love of community and the lives you enrich. Volunteerism, like kindness, is contagious, and you lead with both, and in turn, you inspire others, which enriches all of our communities. In spite of the difficulties we've encountered during the pandemic, your scouts have accomplished so much. Diana Ashley of Conway became the first female Eagle Scout in Arkansas. The Council surpassed 10,000 Eagle Scouts in its history, which means that our communities have benefited from more than 10,000 Eagle Scout projects. Aaron Humphrey recently received the Heroism Award for saving two young men from drowning. I had the honor of presenting the award to Aaron, who used the skills he learned as he earned the Life-Saving Merit Badge. Thank you, volunteers, for strengthening our Boy Scout troops with your selfless contributions to our youth. God bless you. It's always a pleasure and honor to have our governor come and, and speak to us. And I think it speaks highly of the uh, way that scouting is held in high esteem here in the state of Arkansas. Next, we're going to uh, I'd like to introduce to you Tim Cullen. Tim is our new council president for this coming two years. He's an Eagle Scout out of Troop 59 in Little Rock. He's been a member of our executive board for many years. He's traveled to Philmont with the executive board to see that facility. And uh, in addition to that, he's been our attorney for the last couple of years, particularly with the issues that we've been having. He's been a great leader and given a lot to this council. So we're real pleased to have Tim step up and be the council president for the next two years. And he's not able to be with us tonight, but once again, he has a message for us. Good evening. Tonight we celebrate the backbone of scouting in Arkansas, you, the talented, dedicated, hardworking volunteers who deliver the scouting program to our youth. The awards that will be presented tonight are well-deserved, but they're only a small token of the thanks we extend to all our council volunteers who have continued to make scouting happen, even in these extraordinary times. 2020 was a hard year for scouting and it was hard on the council. COVID impacted our activities, our calendar and our budgets. Our numbers are down in membership, units, dollars and staff. But even with all of those setbacks in 2020, Scouting in the Quapaw Area Council survived in all of the important ways. Units adapted with virtual meetings and special attention to safety. The council adapted with virtual programs and activities. And scouting persevered with a historic class of Eagle Scouts, including our first female Eagles and the council's 10,000th Eagle Scout. I'm confident that in 2021, Scouting in the Quapaw Area Council will emerge leaner and stronger and be uniquely positioned to take advantage of the pent up demand for youth development, outdoor activities, citizenship, and leadership. 
I want to extend my personal thanks to our council president for the past two years, Jim Fowler. His tenure has probably been the most complex and difficult for any council president. We were lucky to have his calm expertise and wisdom to lead the council through all of the challenges of 2020 and to keep the council's focus on the main thing, delivering the scouting program to Arkansas youth. Thank you, Jim, for all you've done for scouting and for our council. But tonight we celebrate our volunteers for their service to youth, to scouting in our communities. The Silver Beaver Award is a perpetual honor roll of the scouting all-stars in our council. The Fordyce Award is a unique award recognizing the lifelong impact that a great scoutmaster can have on youth, named after our own shining example of a scoutmaster, John Fordyce. And the Distinguished Eagle Award is a high honor for eagles who continue to be leaders in their profession and their communities. In addition to these high honors and other awards and recognitions, I want to personally thank all of the volunteers who are not named in tonight's program. It takes a big team to deliver scouting, including DEN leaders, PAC and troop committee members, Cub masters, scout masters, and their assistants, district committees and officers, and council level board members and volunteers. I'm sure each of tonight's honorees will point to a dedicated team of scouters who helped them achieve their success in scouting. To all of those volunteers, please accept, on behalf of the youth of our council, our gratitude and appreciation. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for those words of encouragement, and we look forward to your service as our council president in the next two years. Now it's time for me to call on our council commissioner, Steve Jenkins, to come, and he has some recognition. Steve? Thank you, Dick, and good evening, everyone. Um, as the governor noted and Tim echoed, um, scouting is heavily dependent on volunteers. We're here to recognize many of those tonight, and we'll be seeing um, that on through the evening. We, of course, they work in close tandem with um, our professionals, and we, uh, we, we celebrate that tonight. And certainly we want to recognize and, uh, and show a word of appreciation to our scouting professionals uh, as well. So um, without both, scouting would not be what it is. But there's one fella, one man, these past two years that has certainly exemplified himself as he's led us um, with a steady hand on the tiller for all that we've been through in these past two years. And so, Jim, you're, I know you're not here tonight. I know you're out there somewhere. So we want to thank you, say congratulations on a job well done, and recognize you for your leadership and for your um, calm attention to all of the details that were necessary over the past two years. So thank you very much. We do have a couple of gifts for you. Uh, one moment. So uh, first of all, uh, there's a camp ship uh, in your honor, which will be given to a scout to attend this, uh, this summer's um, um, summer camp. So that is in this little envelope here. You'll get a chance to look at that. Secondly, uh, is this... Uh, hardcover edition of the Scout Handbook, which can be added to your library. So um, we'll have this for you. We'll get this in your hands as quickly as possible. But again, we want to thank you for your excellent service, your leadership, and the example that you set forth as a scouter and as a leader of our council. So thank you very much. If you could give Jim another hand. And Dick, I think you're back up. Thank you, Steve. Again, Jim, thank you for all your service over these last 25 or 30 years in scouting. It's been a privilege to work with you, and I know you're going to continue to serve the youth of this community for a long time. Uh, next, uh, I, we have Michael Harrell, who is going to come and make some presentations for those people that uh, 
served in leadership roles in our program area. Michael? Uh, thank you, Dick. And uh, I certainly want to talk about our, our volunteers first, but before I do that, I've got the honor of recognizing a new member of a special award called the James E. West Fellowship. Uh, the James E. West Fellowship is a gift of 1,000 or more in cash or marketable securities and qualifies as bronze level membership. Many individuals make these gifts either on behalf of someone or to recognize someone, such as an Eagle Scout, Silver Beaver recipient, retirement, anniversary, or in memory uh, of a special individual. If you are ever interested in making such a gift towards the James E. West Fellowship, uh, you may find the application on our council website. This is a permanently restricted gift to our endowment. I would right, like to recognize one of our newest members who unfortunately was not able to be here tonight, Mr. David Elmore, and we would like to at least show the award so that everyone can see it. Please join me in congratulating David Elmore. We additionally, uh, last week, recognized two other members at our board meeting, Mr. Rex Reeve and Mr. Tim Cullen. During 2020, our council continu continued to deliver a quality program to the Scouts when and where we could make it possible. While we experienced unprecedented program limitations due to the dedication and the creativity of our volunteers, we were still able to perform some of the many magnificent annual programs. We've all heard the joke that volunteering with scouting takes just one hour a week. Well, in our second year, and because these individuals have gone above and beyond figuratively giving that second hour of each week, we are inducting them into the second hour club. And allow me to show you this. We have a wonderful fleece blanket that says second hour club for those of, those of many we're about to recognize. And they also have the option of a tumbler from Co-op Area Council as well. But this will keep you warm when you're, you're taking care of that second hour each week. <clears throat> as our safe capacity tonight is limited, we would like to call the names of these many volunteers who would normally be present here with us tonight to receive this second hour of program. If you would please allow me to call all of the names and we will recognize them. Camp Beaver Day, Jerry Baldwich. Council Banquet, Michael Harrell. Cope and Climbing Weekends, Andrew Miller. Mark Elkins, Angela Undiner. Cub Adventure Weekend, Brandy Sawyer. Eagle Banquet Chairman, Gary Henningsen. Merritt Badge University, Jim Britt. NCAP, Michael Harrell. NYLT, National Youth Leadership Training, Denny Ashley. Order of the Arrow Lodge Advisor, Sam Bird. Scouting for Food, Hunter Babin. Scouts Virtual BSA Mystery Camp, first we've ever done in the history of our camp, Gary Haney. Trainer's Edge, Michelle Goodish. Wood Badge, Sam Bird. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your service. <clears throat> Additionally, these events would not have occurred without a strong support structure provided by our council operating committees and the leadership of those chairpersons I now recognize. Activities in civic service, Ms. Gail Beckman. Advancement and recognition, Tom Carpenter. Camp promotion, Bill Bird. Enterprise risk management, Dr. Chuck Hiller. Membership, Kelly Rogers. Training, Gary Henningsen, and properties, Kurt Bender. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all that you do. We look forward to seeing you again. <laughs> the recipients of our next awards have one very important thing in common. They are all Eagle Scouts and have all gone above and beyond in the service to the communities in many, many ways. To make these presentations, please welcome to the stage from the National Eagle Scout Association, Dr. David Briscoe.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The NISA Outstanding Eagle Scout Award was established during the BSA's 100th anniversary in 2010, <clears throat> with the first recipients to receive the award a year later. The award was created to recognize notable Eagle Scouts <clears throat> who had either performed distinguished service at the local, state, or regional level, or who were known nationally, but had not yet met <clears throat> the 25-year tenure as an Eagle Scout for the Distinguished Eagle Scout Award. Often worthy candidates for the NOESA have inspired others through their actions and have devoted a lifetime to their profession, avocation, community, and beliefs <clears throat> at oftentimes great sacrifice to themselves and their families. And now, if tonight's recipients of the 2020 Qualpaw Area Council NISA Outstanding Eagle Scout Awards would please come forward and be recognized. Mr. Chris Phillips. <clears throat> Mr. David Kazia. The other recipient is Mr. Andrew Miller, who could not be with us tonight. Uh, would other recipients of this prestigious award please stand and be recognized? Mr. Bill Price, would you stand, please? Okay. The Quapaw Area Council takes great pride in presenting these awards to you. Congratulations. Let's give everybody a big hand. Thank you, David. Good job, as always. Uh, now, Steve Jenkins again is going to come and uh, present some more awards. Thank you, Dick. For many of us, um, a favorite time in our scouting activities is a campfire. So um, I do have a little something that is close to a campfire story for you tonight um, as a precursor to our next award or awards. But um, it, it's difficult for us to have the full effect without being around the campfire. So I would ask you to do that perhaps in your imagination. Imagine if you will, it's you know past sunset uh, we've had supper, we're, um, we're sitting around the fire, it's chilly, and the embers are beginning to burn low. And we begin to talk about stories. And so I have a little campfire story for you. But it's the story of a scout that was so moved and impressed with what his scoutmaster had done for him that he decided to do something about it. So in September of 2001, Quapaw Council was approached by Dope Jackaway, 
who was at the time vice president of the Denver Council, later went on to become president of that council. He wanted to create and sponsor an award that would recognize volunteers, specifically scoutmasters, who had dedicated many years of service to youth in the Quapaw Council as a scoutmaster and who had set an example that would inspire their scouts to go on and become adult leaders. Doak requested this award be named in honor of his own scoutmaster from Troop 7 chartered to St. Mark's Episcopal Church of Little Rock, who had played such an important role in his own life. And that scoutmaster was John Fordyce. This year marks the 20th year that we have awarded the Fordyce Award. And so now I would like to call Dr. Adam Long. Adam is the scoutmaster of Troop 4 in Jonesboro for the past six years. Adam also serves as the skipper of Ship 413 and the Crowley Ridge District Chairman. Quite the list there. Also, uh, Ed Kubler. Ed is the scoutmaster of Troop 33 in Benton. He has served in that role for the last 10 years and was an adult leader for 10 years before that. So gentlemen, we thank you for your time, for your energy, your service to the council, and most especially the service to youth in our communities. Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a hand. Thank you, gentlemen. They're both smiling under those masks. Yeah. So this, this next award is, is not quite in the form of a campfire story, but it's something that will be one day become a campfire story. So 2020 is a unique year for many reasons that we don't need to go into. However, in the Quapaw Council, 2020 is going to be marked as a significant turning point for a couple of reasons. First of all, that 2020 will go down as the year that Quapaw Council saw its 10,000th Eagle Scout. The governor mentioned that a minute ago. But I think we need to stop and think about that and kind of contemplate that for just a minute. 10,000 Eagle Scouts. 10,000 Eagle Projects, 10,000 individuals that have infused themselves back into the communities, having had the experience, the full gamut of experience of scouting and of having attained the rank of Eagle. That is significant and one that should not go unrecognized. But using that as a backdrop, okay, one of those 10,000 individuals is here tonight and literally unique in her own right as she is the first Quapaw Area Council Eagle Scout. Diana Ashley, please come forward. Diana is not only the first Eagle Scout in the Quapaw Area Council, she's the first in the state of Arkansas. And because October 1st, the date of her rank, was the first day that anyone, any female, was eligible to become an Eagle Scout, she is in that group of very first in the nation. So, Diana, we, we recognize you tonight, and we celebrate with you your accomplishment and your achievement. So, Diana will be recognized as a member of the inaugural class of female Eagle Scouts at a special event on Sunday, February 21st, along with other young ladies from around the nation who have earned the rank of Eagle thus far. Now, Diane, I have a note here that says you, you just didn't uh, attain the rank of Eagle with the minimum. You actually earned over 40 merit badges along the way. So congratulations on that. <laughs> So stay put right there for a second. Um, the, that's not all. 
There's more to this story. Uh, Diana will not be the only young lady from Quapaw Area Council who's part of that inaugural class. Two nights ago, January 28th, Mackenzie Parrish became an Eagle Scout also. So Mackenzie, would you jump up here? Okay. Mackenzie is part of Troop 6180, chartered by the East End Baptist Church. She's 15 years old and has already earned 30 merit badges. Actually, the note here says that her favorite is backpacking. So way to go, Mackenzie. She likes to see many of our natural state views and hidden gems that are tucked away. So congratulations on that. Ladies and gentlemen, please recognize both these young ladies as part of the inaugural female Eagle Scouts. Okay. <laughs> Pushing forward, the Young American Award. The Young American Award is an award of the Boy Scouts of America for outstanding college students who have achieved excellence in the fields of art, athletics, business, community service, education, government, humanities, literature, music, religion, and science and have given service to their community, state, and or country. This award was first presented in 1954 by the United States Department of Justice as the American Young Award for Service and the Young American Award for Bravery. Each of these awards were to be presented to two young people from each state and territory annually. And the, originally the Justice Department handled that, but had a little bit of trouble administering and working the program. So the BSA was approached at that time, or rough, I believe roughly in 1966. With the launch of co-educational exploring in 1968, the BSA took on the role of soliciting and receiving nominations and assumed program administration in 1971. So it's with great pleasure that the Quapaw Council would like to honor Diana Ashley in this year's Young American Award recipient. Diana, back up here. Here we go. <laughs> Just a few minutes ago, we recognized Diana for being our first female Eagle Scout. She's from Conway. She's now a freshman at Arkansas State studying biology with an emphasis in pre-professional studies. Her goal is to become a pediatrician. Since girls were allowed to join the program in February 2019, Diane has been very, very busy. She's been a leader in her troop, Troop 6071, chartered by the First United Methodist Church of Conway. She's been inducted into the Order of the Arrow, serving as the Foothills Chapter Chief last year. She also served as a member of the staff for last year's mystery camp at Camp Rockefeller. Though Dinah has been around scouting most of her life, when the announcement came that girls would be invited to join, she quickly began looking at the calendar to see if she would have time to make Eagle Scout. As she reviewed the requirements and the timeline, she realized she did by the narrowest of margins, only a few days, actually. So Dinah hit the ground running and accomplished that goal, as we know. Over the past few months, she's had several opportunities to speak to the media about being the first female Eagle Scout. Dinah has been an outstanding representative of what it means to be an Eagle Scout, consistently encouraging young ladies to chase their dreams and making it clear that the inclusion of young ladies in the Scouts BSA program is an unmitigated success. So ladies and gentlemen, please join with me in congratulating this extraordinary young lady for her accomplishments. Thank you. Michael, I think you're up. Very special award tonight, the American Heroism Award. In scouting, we teach preparedness and the opportunity to help others. Our next award highlights a young man who is both prepared and demonstrated the bravery to help others in an extraordinary situation. 
Aaron Humphrey, would you and your family like to come forward, please, to the center? On May 31st, 2019, Aaron was helping his father, Joel, launch their boat at a public ramp on Lake Hamilton. While his father was parking the truck, Aaron observed a swimmer in distress nearby. Aaron left the boat and jumped into the water, swimming to the victim. Remembering the skills learned while earning his life-saving merit badge, Aaron came up behind the victim and executed a cross-chest carry, pulling the victim back to the dock. To his utter surprise, when he pulled the victim from the water, he had discovered that a second person had been under the water with his arms wrapped around the victim's legs, trying to push him up. When both victims were pulled from the water, thankfully, neither required further medical attention. In recognition of this act of heroism, the National Court of Honor, the Boy Scouts of America, has recognized Aaron with the Heroism Award for demonstrating heroism and skill at life saving. Please join me in congratulating Aaron Humphrey on the American Heroism Award. Aaron was previously recognized and awarded this by the governor at the state capitol a few weeks ago. Once again, congratulations. Tonight we have the opportunity which comes seldom ever in the history of a council and certainly into the order of the era. One of our own members of the Quap Area Council has been awarded the Distinguished Service Award for the National Order of the Era. At this time I'm going to ask our two, two of our previous Distinguished Service Award recipients, David Briscoe and Jim Rhodes, to come and make this special presentation. Airman. Ladies and gentlemen, scouts and scouters, and members of the Order of the Arrow, it is my pleasure to present the National Order of the Arrow Distinguished Service Award to Chris Phillips. Would you and your wife come forward? The National Order of the Arrow Committee presents the Distinguished Service Award to those airmen who have rendered outstanding service to the order on a sectional, area, regional, or national basis. It is given primarily for dedicated service to the order and scouting over a period of years. Only a limited number of awards can be presented. Airmen whose service records are the most outstanding and extend the farthest beyond the local lodge level are usually selected. Young men under 21 and women and adults, volunteer and professionals are eligible for nomination. The Distinguished Service Award was created in 1940 to honor those who rendered service to the Order of the Arrow beyond the local lodge. Since the time of the first awards given in 1940, 
1,072 Distinguished Service Awards have been presented. And I might add that Mr. Russell McKinney, longtime Lodge advisor of Quapaw Lodge, received the honor at the 1971 National Order of Their Conference. Chris, it is my pleasure to present to you the Order of the Arrows highest honor, the National Distinguished Service Award. Thank you, David. <clears throat> David was at that 1940 meeting when they started that. And oh, I'm sorry, I, I forget. Uh, of course, typical of our council banquets over the years, all of these awards are very special. And certainly, Chris, we're proud of you for receiving this after so many years of dedicated service. But we come tonight also to present our Silver Beaver Award for that distinguished service that you give to the youth of our communities. And at this time, I'm going to call on Tony Sykes to come. Tony is a 1958 recipient of the Silver Beaver Award. And uh, I believe he's gonna present the class of 2000. Thank you, Dick, and thank all of you for what you've done for scouting this year and what you'll do for scouting in uh, the future years. I do want to, as we come to this highlight, I do want to clarify and recognize some other folks, uh, primarily the committee uh, to begin with, but also to clarify because you see there is an old story from the past, past, past history of this council that at one time awards, uh, major awards such as the Vigil Honor, <clears throat> were based on the highest bidder. <laughs> now, if you want more info about that, please talk to Dick Browning afterwards. <clears throat> I do want to recognize the committee. Uh, the Silver Beaver Committee consisted of fine scouters from our council. Their job was a, a monumental one because we had more good nominees than we had slots to fill and they did their homework they worked hard they came together no one had to have a flag thrown on them or a whistle blown so it, it went well and i really want to thank gail beckman from washita district vince smith from saracen don greenland from foothills barbara smith from crawley's ridge and skip clemens and brian and sam bird from pinnacle district the Silver Beaver Award is the highest honor a local council can bestow upon an adult volunteer. It is not an award that can be earned or given after a long tenure. It is rather recognition and an honor of those individuals who faithfully and unselfishly give themselves in the interest of scouting. To quote the 19th century author, poet, jurist, and associate justice of the Arkansas Supreme Court, Albert Pike, there's a building over on the east side of town named for him. What we've done for ourselves alone dies with us. What we've done for others and the world remains and is immortal. Tonight, we recognize and honor six members of our scouting family chosen by a committee of their peers who've gone above and beyond serving and providing a positive program for the youth and adult leaders of the Quapaw Area Council their legacy will be a lasting one for the future. As I call your name, please come to the front to receive your recognition. Our first recipient this evening is Mr. Brian Day. Brian is a 1984 Eagle Scout from this council. 
He grew up in a family of scouting volunteers, and both of his parents, Raymond and Barbara, are also Silver Beaver recipients from Quapaw Council. Brian attended the University of Arkansas Little Rock, where he earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in public administration. Brian did spend a brief time serving as a professional scouter uh, before launching into a career of public service as director of the Little Rock Parks Department, then 10 years as assistant city manager, and then his current role as director of the Little Rock Port Authority, which he's held since 2014. Brian has served on the executive board of Quapaw Council since 2009, as well as other nonprofits in Little Rock. He was the Pinnacle District Chairman and has been the leading council's benefactor campaign for Friends of Scouting for the past three years. Brian and his wife, Betsy, currently reside in Little Rock. Quapaw Area Council is pleased to present the Silver Beaver Award to Brian Day. Our next recipient is someone who's not well known by some folks, Gail Haney. Gail is one of those unsung heroes of the Quapaw Council. You may never see Gail up front, but if you spend any time at Camp Rockefeller, you've run into her labors. Uh, you'll, you might even see her serving behind the scenes in the dining hall. For the past 10 years, Gail has been a fixture at district and council events. And of course, one of the distinguishing characteristics of Camp Rockefeller are the quality meals that she and her staff prepare. The dining hall empties, Gail kicks into work to clean up after everyone, after the multitudes have left. Uh, Gail is just one of those great people who works hard and, and makes it happen for everybody. In addition, when she's not in the dining hall, Gail and her husband, Gary, uh, serve the community of Horseshoe Lake. Gary, by the way, is the mayor of that little community, and I think Gail runs the mayor. <laughs> but what Gail does is she picks up folks in the community, she takes them to appointments, she gets some food, she helps with fundraisers, and Gail is a true servant leader in every respect. Quapa Area Council is pleased to recognize with a silver beaver, Gail Haney. I'm shuffling papers, folks, because you see, when I was in college, my, my major professor said, anytime you make a presentation, you move your papers left to right. So I'm trying to live up to that. The next recipient is a, a good fellow with whom I had the pleasure of working for several years, Stephen Jenkins. Steve is a 1973 Eagle Scout and a member of the Order of the Era. For the past decade, he has served as an adult leader in scouting, filling roles from den leader to cub master at PAC 24, then moving into service for the Pinnacle District, four years as district chair, followed by two years as district commissioner. In 2020, he assumed the role as council commissioner for the Quapaw Area Council, the role in which he currently serves. He's also served as a member of the executive board since 2015. In 2019, Steve served as the chair of the Together We Organize Committee, orchestrating an event intended to expose community organizations to the value of chartering scouting programs. As a result of that event, 14 new chartered partners aligned themselves with scouting. Steve and his wife, Carla, are also heavily involved in their church, Emmanuel Baptist, as well as Camp Sogalhatchee and other organizations. When he is in scouting, Steve does do some work as director of network planning for AT&T. So if your phone service goes out, there's your man. Quapa Area Council is pleased to recognize with a Silver Beaver Award, Steve Jenkins. The next recipient is a special person. Bill Price, please come forward. Bill is quite simply a legend in this council. Scouting has been the focus of his time since he became a professional in 1977. 
Of course, many people know him for his time as the Quapaw Area Council Program Director, a role he filled in one way or another for the majority of his nearly two decades serving this council before his retirement in 2014. But scouting was never just a job to Bill. He was always focused on the youth. He encouraged everyone to learn as much as possible about scouting in order to pass along the positive character building and life skills taught through the program. That became all the more clear after his retirement. When the, though many may have left behind the program that had been the focus of so many long hours, Bill instead got involved as a volunteer in both the Pinnacle and Foothills districts. Over the past few years, he's been serving as a member of the Foothills District Committee, and he currently serves as the District Vice Chair for Program. Because the Silver Beaver is not awarded to scouting professionals, but only to volunteers, we are extremely proud to finally be able to recognize Bill Price for his incredible service to the youth of the Quapaw Council. And the Council is pleased to finally recognize and honor Bill Price with a Silver Beaver. And by the way, if you'll notice in the program tonight, the picture of Bill, he is not wearing suspenders. I don't know if he has pants on or not. <laughs> Our next recipient that we want to recognize is David Scoggins. David? David has been a scouting volunteer for 18 years, working at all levels of the council serving in Cub Scouting as an Assistant Cub Master, in Scouts BSA as an Assistant Scout Master, and now as an Assistant Scout Master of a new girl troop, 6193. In Saracen District, he has filled many roles in the District Committee, including Training Chair, and his current role is District Advancement Chair. He's also helped lead Council Contingents to Philmont and the National Jamboree. David has been actively involved in the Order of the Era, having been inducted as a boy in 1971. He now provides significant support for the Quapaw Lodge and Saracen Chapter, serving as Chapter Associate Advisor for the past 10 years. He's a regular presence at OA events, often helping in the trading post or with the kitchen staff, as well as working with ceremony teams. David has given significant time to the Leave No Trace program, becoming a master educator. When scouting allows him to have free time, David works as a process control engineer for Evergreen Packaging. Quapaw Council is pleased to present the Silver Beaver Award to David Scoggins. Our final recipient tonight, not, not that last, but final recipient on the order is Gordon Salaski. Gordon? There are many people who serve the scouting movement behind the scenes, and Gordon is one of the clearest examples of that. For the past 26 years, Gordon has served as a member of the Quapaw Area Council's Executive Board, including serving as the Vice President of Finance since 2010. Though most in the program may never see him, Gordon has labored long and hard to make sure that the scouting program has the funds necessary to do its life-shaping work in the lives of tens of thousands of young people. As a boy growing up in Ashdown, Gordon was involved in Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts, earning his air of light. However, it has been by applying his expertise around finances that Gordon has made such a significant impact in the Quapaw Area Council. He served on the team coordinating many fundraising efforts, including several sportsmen's auctions and sporting clays events. But as vice president of finance, Gordon ensures that the council always operates within the bounds of good financial stewardship. Gordon currently serves as the division president of Centennial Bank. His expertise proved extremely valuable in 2020 as he helped the council navigate the fallout from the coronavirus crisis leading the effort to secure funds from the government's program and closing out the 2020 budget of the council as a balanced one. The council is pleased to have people such as Gordon Selaski, and we're proud to present him the Silver Beaver. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, Dick, back to you. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom for us? No, but I got some tickets for sale. <laughs> that's, just, that's for another story, isn't it, uh, Chris? Congratulations to each of our Silver Beaver recipients. You each add something to our program. Uh, I, I think it's all of us that come together in times that uh, are tough is when we need to, to reach out and know that there's other people out there struggling like we are, and we're here to help. And we help and support each other in so many different ways. Each has his own calling. And so tonight we celebrate that, and we celebrate our council. You know, uh, I was talking with our new Silver Beaver recipient, Brian Day. Brian and I go back a long ways. I knew him when he was a young man. And uh, we, we talked about the challenges that scouting has now. But you know, there were challenges back in the 1920s. In the 1930s, think of a, a 10 year depression that scouting worked through. Scouting got Philmont during the depression. Gordon and I went there. And, uh, so, you know, th things can happen. The Second World War lasted for almost six years. And during that time, scouting had its role in its place. Uh, and we will have it still. There is still a place for scouting. And those people that made scouting survive in those days, we have those same people today. And they're sitting here. You know, we might not think that we're the ones, but we are. It's up to us to carry that torch. And so I know that 2021 will be a good year. I know that we will come through it together and stronger. Lord Baden-Powell, <clears throat> the founder of our scouting movement, died on January the 8th, 1941. He is buried in St. Peter's Cemetery in Kenya. On his gravestone is a circle with a dot in the middle. A circle with a dot in the middle. It's the old trail sign backpacking sign for I've gone home or going home. Lord Baden Powell had gone home. Last year, in 2020, we had several of our longtime faithful scouters go home. If you would join with me here in a moment, I want to read their names and if we could have a moment of silent prayer in memory of those scouters who gave so much for so long to scouting. Ray Camp, Randall Hall, Francis Jensen, John Ragsdale, and Greg Shared. If you will join me and reflect on their legacy. Amen. This morning, long before the sun rose, I was sitting in the deer woods, in the duck woods. It was cold and it was wet, and I was sitting with a young man, about half my age. We had been duck hunting together for the last two or three years, and we were sitting there talking, and he said, well, it's been a bad year. Are you going to come back tomorrow? I don't think I'm going to. And I said, well, I don't believe I am either. I'm going to uh, go to a Boy Scout meeting tonight. And the time I get home and get straightened around, I'm, I'm too old to get up after three or four hours sleep. And he, he asked what it was. Well, he's an Eagle Scout. He's been to the 1981 Jamboree with Dr. James Graham was the Scoutmaster in those days for that, that troop, and he talked of James and, and the, the role that he played. He remembered uh, James. He took a troop to Philmont, Raymond James's troop. You all remember Raymond from Pine Bluff? He, was, uh, he had been to Philmont before, and he took Raymond there the first time and led the contingent. He talked about those things <clears throat> that were important to him that he learned from scouting. And was just reflecting on what a, you know, what a great time, what a great organization it was. 
Uh, now, he's not involved with scouting, but he has a four-year-old boy. Uh, his son, J.M., will be four, uh, I believe it's the 18th of February. And it's going to be fun for me to see when it comes that time that Justin steps up and becomes a scout leader. He's going to do that because of people like you. People like you who inspired him as a youth, he will give that back. <clears throat> That's what we teach the youth. Our New Eagle Scouts, our Heroism Award winner. This is what we expect. We expect you to be up here to take my place when that time comes, which is soon, I'm sure. But it's up to you. So tonight as we close this virtual council bank with this awards bank, with this time of celebration of things that we each and each of y'all have done without the hope of any reward, but you, you did it for scouting, you did it for the right reasons. Let's remember that as we leave, you influence the lives of others and they in turn influence the lives of others and more. So our legacy is not what we leave in our bank account, it's not what patch or knots that we have on our uniforms, but it's what's in the heart of the youth that we have served. Good night. <laughs>